In this video, I'm going to tell you about the most important accounting procedure that you can perform if you're a bookkeeper. So what is the most important procedure? Well, it's to reconcile all of the balance sheet accounts before you close the books. Now, don't rush off. You may be thinking, I already know this, uh, but stay with me. If you're a bookkeeper, we're going to look at uh, the different parts of this, reconciling bank accounts, inventory, PP&E, payables, receivables, etc. And by the time we get done, I think you'll have a better feel for what needs to occur. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is what I call mystery accounts. Uh, no, it's not Halloween. It's just a normal day in the office and you're doing bookkeeping. And sometimes when a bookkeeper is not sure of where to post something, they'll stick it, and I'm using those words intentionally, they'll stick it in a mystery account. So what is a mystery account? It would be, for example, a suspense account, sometimes other assets or miscellaneous liability account. And why do people do this? Well, they're thinking, I'm going to put it here, and when I get time, I'll go back and correct this. And what happens? <laughs> yeah, they forget to go back. And when they forget to go back, then there's these amounts that accumulate, for instance, in a suspense account. So when you're reconciling all of the balance sheet accounts before you close the books, you might run into some of these mystery accounts, and we just need to clean those up before we close the books. You know, most of the time when I'm, I'm an auditor and I'm looking at records, most of the time I see that bookkeepers have properly reconciled or receivables and payables back to a detail. So with accounts receivable, uh, if we do it right, the bookkeeper is going to reconcile the individual customer accounts, a total of those accounts, back to a general ledger receivable account. So if there's 500 customer balances, the total of those balances would normally reconcile to a customer receivable account in the general ledger. The same thing is true with payables. We're reconciling back to a detail. In this instance, we're reconciling back to a total of all the vendors that we owe money to at the end of the period. Most of the time you have an accounts payable module in there. It's recording the amounts as you key in the invoices that are due to vendors. And, and oftentimes the software will automatically reconcile that detail of, of vendor payables back to the general ledger accounts payable account. So most of the time I don't see a problem here, but if by chance we haven't reconciled receivables or payables before closing, then we obviously need to do so. Now, I'm about to talk about what I consider the most important reconciliation, and that would be, what do you think it would be? <laughs> I bet you know, it is bank accounts. So we should be reconciling bank accounts on a monthly basis, if not on a daily basis. If we do that, we should be good. If we haven't done that, then we prob probably have a problem. Uh, so you've got to reconcile all of your bank accounts before you know whether or not you've really got a decent set of records. If you don't reconcile bank accounts, there's no way we can know if the, if the, if the accounting records are correct. So this has to be done. If, there's, if, I, if there was one of these that I said you've absolutely got to do this, it would be this part. So reconcile each bank account. Next up is investments in, in debt accounts. So for investments, we normally receive investment statements from the broker. 
we're keying in uh, journal entries to recognize those monthly transactions. And then we're reconciling that investment statement back to the general ledger investment account or accounts. So you may have multiple brokers, you may have multiple types of investments, but reconcile the investment statements back to those general ledger investment accounts. In relation to debt, you just, just look at your loan amortizations and tie those back to the debt accounts in the general ledger. One thing I will note here, if you've got uh, leases, you want to make sure that all of your leases subject to ASC 842 are properly recorded. Uh, so just think about, do I have lease agree agreements that would require me to record a lease liability, a no, another form of debt. Okay, next up is uh, plant property and equipment. We often call this PP&E, and we're reconciling those general ledger accounts, such as equipment, vehicles, land, etc. We're reconciling those general ledger accounts to our depreciation schedule. So most entities have a depreciation software and it will generate a schedule by category such as land or equipment. And then we're simply taking that depreciation schedule and reconciling back to the PP&E general ledger accounts. Uh, you take a look also at depreciation expense and make sure that the depreciation schedule amounts or tying back to uh, the depreciation expense accounts. In inventory, if you have inventory, make sure you do your counts at the end of the period. Uh, key in those counts, say, in an Excel spreadsheet. Put the pricing in that spreadsheet for each inventory item and then come up with a total for each inventory item and then you'll have a grand total of all the inventory amounts that you've computed. That should reconcile back to your general ledger accounts. Uh, you may have more than one inventory account, so make sure those spreadsheets tie back into the general ledger accounts. So uh, let me talk just a minute about one of the problem areas that I often see so when I'm doing audits, a lot of times I'm looking at payroll liability accounts. And when I do, about 50% of the time, I see errors in payroll withholding accounts, such as insurance withholding. So if your company has 100 employees and 30 of those elected to buy cancer insurance, for example, then the company should be withholding those amounts and remitting those payments to the insurance company. Now, I can tell you, if, if you're a bookkeeper and you're not staying on top of this, you will have some errors, most likely, and these accumulate over time, and then it gets really difficult to make the corrections. So the moral of the story is, Reconcile all, all of your payroll withholding accounts on a monthly basis, at least, uh, you know, on a monthly basis. You might do it every week, but at least on a monthly basis. And then finally, uh, we talk about equity accounts. Most small businesses and nonprofits will just have one or two equity accounts. Most of the time, this is the easy part of reconciling all the balance sheet accounts before close because there's just one or two accounts and most of the time we're not posting anything to these equity accounts. Most of the time the profit and loss is automatically closed to retain earnings by your software. And I say here, bookkeepers should generally avoid posting entries to these equity accounts. Now, what I see many times is a bookkeeper doesn't know where to post something. They'll post it to an equity account. That's often faulty thinking. So 
we need to avoid that. You will occasionally have prior period errors where you do post a journal entry to an equity account. But most of the time, you can scan in the general ledger your equity accounts, and there really shouldn't be any activity there. Now, there's exceptions to that. Some of you may have uh, 15 different equity accounts, and it's highly complex. I'm talking about the average small business and nonprofit. One other tip, once you reconcile all of the uh, balance sheet accounts, then I, wanna, I want you to think about looking at your income statement accounts. Those include your revenues and expenses. Compare the totals for your revenues and expenses to your budget or if you don't have a budget to the prior period. Now, why do I say to do this? Well, if you've, if you've posted an expense to a revenue account, for example, or a revenue amount to an expense account, when you do this test of comparing current year balances to the prior period or to your budget, Oftentimes, it'll jump off the page and you'll see, hey, I made a mistake here. Then you can go scan the general ledger account for that revenue account or expense account and see where the mistake occurred. So I hope this helps. Until we meet again in the next video, take care and bye now.